Good afternoon, and my apologies if you've had to wait a few days for the latest uploads, but um, I've been uh, suffering a bit from nose and throat problems, and uh, my voice has come back today, so I thought I'd start again. Uh, we are currently looking at the parables of Jesus, and uh, this one is about what to do with the weeds that stop the goodness growing in our lives. Matthew chapter 13 verses 24 to 30. Jesus put another parable to them. He said, The kingdom of the heavens has become like a man sowing quality wheat seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weedy rye grass amongst the wheat and went away. And when the blades sprouted and produced grain, the weedy rye grass appeared at the same time. So the master of the house's workers came and said to him, Sir, didn't you sow good quality seed in your field? Where's all this weedy rye grass come from? And he said to them, Someone, an enemy, has done this. And the workers said to him, do you want us to go out and make a pile of them now? But he said no, just in case when you're pulling out the rye grass, you uproot, uproot the wheat as well, let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will say to the reapers, first, pile up the rye grass weeds and bind them in bundles to be burnt. But pile up the wheat in my granary. Uh, well, now, today we are uh, revisiting a parable that we have seen before, back on, right back on day 42, when we were looking at how dependent the Bible is on natural imagery and farming imagery when it's describing the plight of the human race. And this parable is a straightforward allegory which is explained for Jesus by Matthew a few verses later in the same chapter, verses 36 to 43, where he says this, <clears throat> The fellow sowing the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed represents people who belong to the kingdom of God. The weeds, those belonging to the evil one. The enemy sowing weeds uh, is the devil. The harvest is the end of the eon. The harvesters are angels. Well, as in all parables, we are invited to look at the, this image placed before our imagination and see uh, where it is we fit in. The question here is, is whether we are a positive or a negative contribution to the inevitable harvest. Am I good seed? or bad seed? Am I destined to be harvested, or am I destined for the bonfire? This is placing before Matthew's readers the choice that has to be made by each potential believer as an individual. Do I trust God or not? Will my life be lived in the grace and love of God or not? Do I trust God safely to remove the evil and save the good when harvest time comes? This can, of course, be read in two ways, and either might equally be true. On the one hand, this might be about our world where good and bad things happen, and good and bad people have to coexist, to be separated out at the end of time, some for useful preservation and some for destruction. This would have been Matthew's preferred interpretation of this allegory if we go by what he wrote in his explanation. But on the other hand, uh, what if Jesus had in mind a more subtle meaning in which the field is not the world, but our personal, our personal world, our, our life uh, and the way we live it? Each of us is a mixture of good and bad. And circumstances, here referred to as the devil, sows the evil in us alongside the good, sown there by the Son of Man. God does not want to harm us, but to perfect us. 
<clears throat> were he suddenly to remove the evil from us right now, he would probably damage or destroy us, since the good and the evil in us are tangled together in our lives. So he leaves it to the end of our earthly lives, to a time when he can safely remove the evil and preserve the good. Uh, now, medieval ideas about how God will achieve this, as in the doctrine of purgatory and indulgences, make all this like a legal process in which we have to work to remove the evil from ourselves. But this parable shows us that it is God who does this subtle task with care and love. The real God is not legalistic at all. He desires us and rescues us, not only from the evil in the world, but also from the evil that is part of our nature. Tomorrow, Jesus talks about an everyday miracle that would have taken place in every household, every day, the miracle of yeast rising. I'll see you tomorrow.